Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in. Today, super excited. This was today's supply drop that I got. It is Napoleon, the Waterloo Campaign of 1815. Make sure I read that right, I almost said 51. Anyway, this is another great block game from Columbia Games, and this is the fourth edition. So let's tear the shrink wrap. I figured I'd give you all the boring talk stuff at the end here. Let's just tear in. That way you can watch the unboxing. If you want to stay and hear what I have to say later, you can. This is also an exciting unboxing because you get two unboxings for one video. We'll also unbox this great card game. Uh, this is Eagles. And all I, I'll, I've only read the back. I have, haven't actually seen a whole lot of information about this on the internet. And maybe that's because my search skills aren't very good. But I'll be very excited to open this and share it with you as well. So first we'll take a look at Waterloo. This comes with, uh, first of all, a really good picture of Napoleon. Uh, and I had to admit, when I first pulled this out of the box, I handed it to my son like this because the back of the box has a much more exciting picture. <laughs> so I was like, dude, check it out, we got Napoleon. And then he's like, oh, but that's the back of the box. Well, anyway, there's your little description of Waterloo, your game components. So I might have to refer to that later to tell you exactly what's in here. But I am very excited to open this. Now, this reminds me of Combat Infantry, where I have the slipcase cover, and then inside is the box that contains all the games. So I gotta set this slipcase here. Don't wanna ruin that. All right, so here's your black box that then opens up, and we're gonna see, oops, shifted my cutting mat there. Get off there. Here's what's inside. Nice. I have to admit, I never thought that I would find myself enjoying block games, but I really have. Uh, this is this is the second full block game I have. Now I have gotten and I've played Urban Operations, which is a block game. So I guess I should say this is the third. And then I had Combat Infantry, also for Columbia Games, and then we've got now Napoleon. And I'm finding the the more I play the block games the more I'm actually really enjoying it. And here then is your bag of blocks initially. And it, they aren't stickered so we'll find the sticker sheet in a minute. And I do see this has got two, two D6, two red die 6, just kind of shuffling through here. It looks like two black die 6. And that stands out immediately because when I played Combat Infantry that came with two 10-sided dice. Four 10-sided dice. It came with several 10-sided dice, but what we got here are some six-sided dice. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that out. So the blocks, until you sticker them, not very exciting. But the maps, okay, this is, this is nice because I don't see any hexes or grids. So let me, let me go ahead and move the box off to the side. Let's take a look at the map. First of all, I have to say, on first glance of just this one map panel, that's really nice artwork. When I look at it, it seems the trees have a very similar look to the type of trees that they, they have in uh, Combat Infantry. It's hard to explain. The, the art, I, I can't tell exactly if it's a drawing. These, I think, are probably a drawing. A painting but again you've got rivers you've got cities located and that's just off the first map tile so let's see here you got your little bit of cardboard flashing I'm gonna open this up now this is well this is a little bit bigger than my my viewing area uh, I wish I could give you a nice full zoom here so right here what you're looking at is, because I've got the map upside down, so this would be the bottom portion of the map. And so what you see here is three, I guess each section is about eight and a half. I haven't measured it, but you've got three panels. And then the top portion of the map is also three panels. So two panels deep and then three panels wide. 
and I think overall this has really good artwork and it's easy to tell your roads, your rivers. Um, I've got this uh, dotted line so I'll have to look to see if that's maybe a trail, is that uh, marking a border line. I don't see on here like a map ledger so we'll have to look at the rule book and see exactly what these represent. Now this, the rivers clearly defined, you can also see the city so if there's a city size you can tell which ones are larger cities than the smaller cities so very clear legible map I kind of like that and the fact that there's no hexes I'm thinking because again I haven't really I haven't read anything yet so this is new for me so I'm very excited it it could be area to area movement like city to city movement which will then be affected by your roads and then if you have people in area of control, if they own other cities, that affects where you can move. So I'm actually very excited to find out. And here's a big dotted line going right up here through the map. So yeah, I definitely want to see what that is. Now down here looks like a turn tracker. So we're playing the 15th of June through June 22nd. And then you have F-A-F-A-F-A -A -F -A -F -A colored. I'll, I'll have to learn what this is. I don't want to make too many assumptions but whatever these represent to, uh, I'm guessing is some sort of when they come on the board, possibly. So you have just a little bit of a tracker. Otherwise, it's pretty much just all map. All right, excellent. So the map is looking great. So I'm going to just set this aside. We then have, as I reach, reach behind me, this looks like battle boards. I did do a little bit of research and that's my understanding of the game. So the game you're going to play the strategic part, the moving of your armies on the big map. Then when you get into fighting, you're going to bring your troops to these battle boards. Now I've got two battle boards, so I'm not sure if that's, you know, somehow one for each player if you're going to have the ability to have two battles at once. Not quite sure why I need two battle boards, but here you've got your center, left, right, and reserve. And then I guess you're going to line your troops up, your blocks against their blocks, and then battle it out. And what I've read is people actually have really enjoyed that because it helps keep like a, almost like a, a minimalist look on the actual map when you're moving troops. And then when you bring it here, you can actually line your troops up and they start to get that that look of line infantry you know you just I've got my left I've got my center I've got my right you can see as the lines collapse so very interested to see how this plays out so there you go you've got two two battle boards included with your game okay give me just a moment here oh well look oh man I'm just kind of flashing this through the light on the camera and these are like a metallic let's set these here real quick these are awesome looking stickers let me hold these up that even has a nice shine to it what I love that metallic glint coming off of them that is fantastic amazing and they're cut really good too I don't I don't see any miscuts so these will be looking really good so you've got like a, your light blue for the French uh, yellow for the British looks like uh, gray then I'm assuming would be the Prussians then we have a couple stickers down here that will mark units that are in the square then we have a few woods locations a stream there's a couple of farms which give your infantry, it says one infantry plus one, and then we have a hill, one arty uh, plus one long range. So again, a very simple looking setup. And I'm automatically, my mind keeps going back to combat infantry. When I first saw that, I'm thinking, you know, where do you get the depth of play that you would have with a more traditional counter game? And I'm looking at this and I'm saying, there's just not much here. But it's already reminding me of combat infantry. 
and that's good. That means I should be able to pick up the rules. So what am I seeing that reminds me of combat infantry? Well, you've got a leader unit with one strength. So if you wipe out Napoleon, that's probably bad. Uh, but then he has F2, and that's like fire 2. So if this is similar to their other games, then so uh, you would roll like two dice for your combat. Although I don't see... Well, actually, you're going to roll based on your number here. So the F2 is like you would hit or do damage on uh, when you roll your dice. I I don't know, because I haven't read the rules yet, since I see two red dice, two black dice. So I'm guessing you possibly roll both dice. And if the number added together is less than the number here, maybe that's a hit. Or uh, you roll your dice six, and if it's the one or a two, it's a hit. Uh, the guard hits maybe on a one, two, or three. That's just a guess. So I'm just digging back into my combat infantry. See, combat infantry use die 10, so you're trying to hit this number of three or less on a die 10, which is a little more challenging. On a die six, not so challenging. So we'll see, we'll see. That's just an initial guess. But the layout is very, very familiar to me. So happy with that. Uh, I'm not sure that this number here, I'll have, I'm gonna have to look up exactly what the, the numbers mean. So, like I said, initially, that's that's my guess. But, oh, man, I just like running my hands on them. What? So, there you go. Stickers. Then I saw your, let's see, what do they call that? Your troops, organization, and equipment. So, your organizational charts here. We've got French. So, we know who's under Napoleon and then your other leaders. I was looking to see if there's names I know. Blucher, I only know that because there's a miniatures game I wanted to play called Blucher. So that name stands out, but looks like that's uh, your Prussians. And then here's Wellington of your British. So Prussians, British, French. Just looking, it almost looks like the French are outnumbered. So I had to tell you. I really wanted to play this because I wanted to learn more about Napoleonic Warfare and especially the Waterloo Campaign. Napoleonic Wargaming to me is just such a fascinating thing to study because it's, you know, it's just so hard for me to describe just what it's like when you see troops lined up against each other and going back to the Civil War, going back to the American Revolution, the musket era has just always been of great fascination that I know virtually nothing about. So I was hoping that with this, I could also use this as like a historical teaching aid for my son. My son is 14 and he likes a lot of the games that we play, but I thought, you know, this would be a great way to start introducing him to some ideas of history. You know, what are some things that have shaped the world that we know? So this is actually very fascinating for me to look at because there's, there's just a lot to this historically. I don't know. So this is a great starting point. So we've got our French, British, Prussians. And let me go ahead and set that aside. So there you go. There's your troop lineups. And of course, if it's telling you the leaders, then I'm sure that's going to play an important part of the game is making sure you're within possibly command cohesion and, and uh, command radius of your leaders. Now we have the rule book. All right, great. This is the next thing I got to read. So again, having never seen the game, just kind of look at, at, at some of the components my mind is automatically trying to say to myself, you know, here's how this is similar to combat infantry so I can learn how to play, which isn't always a good thing to do <laughs> because sometimes they are different games for a reason. Um, but here we go. It starts off right here on the first page. This grand total of pages, uh, let me take a peek. Oh, I guess I could have just flipped to the end. So eight pages. Combat Infantry was also very similar. So it would be very interesting to see how much game you get in here. Uh, one thing I have enjoyed about the game rules so far from Columbia Games is even though you see three columns of information here, some of the pages, the third column is usually uh, more informational. But I'm um, looking here. looks like it is maybe a good solid three columns of rules per page. So I'm not going to say it's super dense. Okay, here we go. Here's some 
battle tactics on your third column, French strategy over here in the third column, and then right here you've got an index in your third column. So some of these pages, the third column has other information in it. Good examples, color, this is paper. Uh, it doesn't feel like a glossy magazine type of paper, but they've done a very good job of putting in examples of your counters. And then here we go. Uh, what I was trying to think of later or earlier, you know, you've got your strength. So as you rotate, it gets that. That was how we did dice. So if you had four, strength four, that's like rolling four dice. So possibly I'm rolling four dice. They need to roll twos or less to score hits. That's a guess. Uh, if that's how it plays out, that's good because that's another cool thing then about the Columbia game system is there's a consistency among the rule sets. And I know some people probably don't like that, but actually I find that very comforting because that means if I have a basic understanding of the system as I get into more specific games, I'm learning the nuances for that game. Anyway, again, great color examples. Here's a, a good example of the battle board set up. And again, that's why I was saying this is really good because you can start to see how you're lining your troops up, right? Those line formations against each other. And then it, it looks like an example of combat, battle moves, moving troops around so you can fill gaps, it looks like. So very good, very good. I'm actually very, very excited to hop into that. So that's the rules. And one more thing. Oh, okay. Well, let's do this. Napoleon Double Blind. There's a double blind game. With two or three copies of the game, players can play double blind versions of Napoleon. Some gamers say this game, especially the three player double blind version, is the most exciting and challenging game they have ever played. So my guess would be, in the double blind, if each player had a copy of the game, then one player plays the French, one player plays the British, one player plays the Prussians. And this then is going to tell you how to do that. That's, that's actually pretty cool. I'm not foreseeing any time in the near future this happening for me, but I'm actually glad that that option is in there. All right. So then on the back, then, this is Napoleon and Eagles. E or, well, it says Napoleon and Eagles, then here, Eagles and Napoleon. So the Eagles card game is a more detailed version of the battle system in Napoleon. Both games can be combined to give each more depth, adding strategic play to Eagles, the tactical details to Napoleon. All right, uh, set up and play Napoleon normally, and then here's some special rules. So without reading the rules, that that's interesting too, because when I read the back of the box for this, this appears to be its own separate card game. So I find that very fascinating that you have a card game that interacts with the board game. So the board game, I guess, is going to give you the strategic movement of the units, and then you can maybe fight the battles using the card system for that tactical depth. Interesting. Well, let's finish looking at what's in the box here. Well, then you have your um, catalog. Couldn't think of the word for a moment there, but then here you got a catalog of some of their games, and they have a lot. Go to their website. I really encourage you to go to the website. I I have to admit, I was not super knowledgeable about Columbia Games. One of my experiences with Columbia Games is I wanted to play the Harn role-playing game. And so I've been to the Columbia website a few times, but looking for Harn. As I've moved into some board games and now gaming and then block gaming, uh, Columbia Games, I'm finding, actually has a very wide selection of games from role-playing games, block games, war games, non-war games. So give them a, a sh you know, give them a shot. Check out their website. And that's what's in the box. So the one thing I wanted to check was... Uh, I said this is rules, but I was looking for a scenario. I guess the scenario is... Put your pieces out and go to war. Victory. So here's the victory conditions. French victory. Allied victory. 
So I'm going to have to look through here just so I can make sure exactly what the specific stereo is. So we'll have to read how to set up and whatnot. So I, I was looking for like a separate booklet. Um, and I was only looking for that because I wasn't sure then if the game just requires the entire board or is it some battles beyond just Waterloo. But it looks like this might just be Waterloo. Again, remember, first time opening it, right? So please forgive me if I'm not 100% knowledgeable on exactly what we're finding. You're seeing it for the first time with me. Or maybe you've seen it before. So you can maybe in the comments explain to me what, what all you're looking at. Uh, so down here is a publishing history. So this is actually pretty neat. First game was in 1974. Second edition, 1977. Third edition was 1993. And then fourth edition, 2013. So this has a nice, nice history to it. All right, well there you go. That's that's the box components of Napoleon, fourth edition. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that aside. Well, if that didn't get you excited for some Napoleonic action, cards should. See, I pre-ripped the shrink wrap a little bit. Trust me, I've struggled once or twice on a video trying to open shrink wrap, so I pre-cut that. I'm not going to read all of the back. So here is your box art. And then on the back, it tells you a little bit about the game. And that's what it says. It's a collectible trading, tradable card game for two players. Uh, so when I first read that, my initial thought is, I got to get more boxes so I can complete the set. Because it looks like there's 300 different cards in the Waterloo series. And the deck comes with 60. Now, also on the back, it says uh, for the four battles that you could play with this, all four battles are playable with just two decks. So my initial thought then is uh, I'll need this and one more deck, and it looks like they're going to be possibly random what comes in your two decks, so you're not getting the same thing. So if you want to play a lot of verses in just a card game, you might need a second deck. But the rule book for Napoleon tells me that if that's not what I want to do, then the cards are going to act as a tactical modifier for the board game. So let me just lay out. All right, so first of all, we will look through the cards. I, I'm already looking at some of the art. Very cool. So let me just set that aside for a moment. Boop. What do you get? First you get a stack of cards, right? And that says, well, I'm not going to count them, but either these are really thick or that's more than 60 cards. I'm not going to complain. Uh, it says Eagle's deck contains 60 cards. Well, these are some nice, thick cards. Wow. Well, we'll take a look at those in a minute. Here we got some counters that come with it. They are double-sided. So I'm guessing there's your square, and then you have troops in column, and then you got a couple numerical markers, a one and a two side. Okay, so counters, got that. Waterloo version one. So we'll have to flip this open. This kind of takes me back a little bit to, I was going to almost say Magic the Gathering, but I... I think every version I had of Magic the Gathering had like a, I don't think it was a fold out like this. I thought it was a little book, but I, I've had some older trading card games so that came with, uh, you gotta fold out the instructions. So there's actually a lot here. This is pretty in depth. Uh, just for some things I'm reading, you know, you can take care of reinforcements, there's terrain concerns, buildings, your generals, core integrity. There's some special cards, decoys. I mean, that's just from the back. So you got, yeah, your your are things in line or they in column. Uh, so just for a card game, yeah, looks like this is going to be pretty in depth as well. So let's set the rules aside for just a moment because that's some small print. But what I want to take a look at then are the cards. Now these look really good. I'm just holding them upside down. But without having read the rules, I can't tell you what the values mean. But what I want to do then is just kind of take a look at some of the art. So then, I'm guessing that's French. Now here's the back. I don't know if they all have the same back. They don't. This is really gorgeous looking. 
I had to admit, there's some things that I, I really look for and enjoy in a game. A lot of times counter art, uh, in this case sticker art for the blocks. The stickers are really good. The artwork for the cards is very stylized, but the backs of cards, that usually gets my interest. Some card games have very boring backs. This is actually a really nice back. So if I, if I sleeve these, which I'll be honest, I probably will, I'm gonna use uh, clear sleeves. That way I can enjoy the back. Now, that's also probably good because as I was just looking here, we have different colors as well. So that will probably denote the nationality. So you might, might need to know that. So clear sleeves would be good for this. I use, just in case anybody's curious, I've been buying lately Dragon Shield Clear Matte. Uh, they also make a Dragon Shield Clear, but it's glossy. The reason I don't use the glossy is the both sides are very slick. And so if you start getting a, a big stack of cards together, they have a tendency to slide apart. But if you get the mats, what the happens is the front will have a nice clear uh, view, if you will, so you can see the card artwork. And then the back, it's still clear, so you can see the artwork on the back of the card, but then it has a little bit of a grip. It's kind of cloudy. And that way, when you have a stack of cards, they don't slip around. So that's what I will sleeve these with. And they look great and like I said they're a real durable so if you don't sleeve your cards I think that you would have a lot of play out of these before you have to worry about wear and tear now what do you get in each deck I'm, I'm almost like I said under the impression that it's a tradable game so it's possible that everything in here is going to be random so if you purchase a couple decks you might end up with some cards that you see more than others I don't know if they've put a rarity on these. Uh, let's see, there's 95, a 101. I was just looking to see if there's like a rarity. So if there's like common or uncommon, which if there is, I'm not quite sure where that's located on here. Um, but uh, these look really good. Like I said, I won't show you every card, but they all have a really nice artwork on them. Yeah, well, here's a great way to learn history. If you don't know who people are, here's some great pictures. Plus, this is kind of cool because even if you don't use the card game or integrate it um, for the block game, that's that's one thing. Just real quick about the stickers. See, this is using, I'm not going to say like NATO symbology, obviously. This is before NATO, but you've got the crossed muskets for infantry. And... A couple of the, well, let's see, I see Blucher and Wellington and Napoleon. They have a face sticker, right? But the rest of this then, even though these are really well done, even if you just had the cards out so you understood what French infantry looked like. So if nothing else, this is giving you some detail to the stickers that you might not have otherwise. So this is, this is very exciting. Let's see, what's another one? So you've got some some rules for the, the train, like a farm. Let's see, rally. I know you can't see all this. Carboners, carboners names I can't pronounce. <laughs> so, oh, lots of good stuff. I just see myself one day going through here and if there's a name I can't pronounce, I'll have to get on like Google Translate put in a name and then say like how do you pronounce that way I have a chance at, at learning how to pronounce some of these names because if I try now I will butcher it and I don't want to offend anybody all right oh, this is some great stuff so first of all thank you for Columbia Games for sending this and if you've played this you know what to do in the comments share share what you've enjoyed you know share what you know about the game if you have some gameplay tips I know sometimes people have house rules or if you've encountered stumbling blocks to learning. That's something else I know about games too. Is a lot of times the rules are written well and it's just that sometimes your first playthrough you get stuck. Like, oh, here's a particular rule I was hung up on until I, you know, it clicked. So go ahead 
and share what you know about Napoleon. And I hope to come back later when it's all stickered up and give you a little bit of a gameplay impression. So thank you so much for watching the unboxing. So again, that's the Eagles card game. We'll do a reverse boxing. This is the counters that come with the card game. You get a rules booklet fold out for the card game. Then, for Napoleon itself, you have your black box. Since we're talking about stickers, I'll throw those in right now. You get one counter sheet of stickers. You get one eight page rule book. You get an additional double blind rules for multiple copies of the game. And then you get the rules on how to integrate the cards into this game to enhance the tactical combat aspect. You also get two of your faction charts. Tells you the leadership, how they all stack up, who's in charge of who. Two combat charts. You get this gorgeously detailed map. I love this map. I can't wait to play on it. This is honestly the first war game. I know I sound I sound like someone who's never played games before, but this is actually the first war game I've played that did not have hexes. Everything up to this point, I kid you not, has all been hex-based. So I'm very anxious to see how area movement works. And then finally, the blocks. Yes. In all their blocky goodness. And once you close it up... I was never very good at closing these things up. Kind of like when I buy stuff from Walmart, you take it out of the box to look at it and then it never goes back in the box the same way, but we're good here. And then finally is your slip cover of Napoleon, 4th edition. So again, thank you very much for tuning in. Um, if you Again, if you have any questions, comments, go ahead and leave that below. And I will come back later and show you kind of a nice game overview of how everything works together. All right, have a great night. See you later.